Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Voice is coming back. My cold turned into pneumonia. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting over that now. Wonderful, ain't it? Some people get a t-shirt when they you come back from vacation. You know, I, I get sick. Anyways, so I wanted to beat on this guitar. That was the whole reason why I had so much high gain and kind of like was playing the way I was trying to play I guess if you want to call it um to see if how well this would stay stable as far as staying in tune goes you know the trem staying or the Floyd Rose 2 staying where I have it set up how the action I have it is going to feel with the neck how much buzz I'm going to get with the neck um how well the neck is going to stay where I set it for the relief how well the repair job was that whoever did the repair job on this uh, headstock was going to hold up. That's holding up really nice. That is, it, it, they did a beautiful job on that. You can't see no no cuts. You can't see no lines, no nothing after I refinished it. So that worked out pretty good. I did, however, have a faulty toggle switch, so I had to go out and I got three switches. I got a bunch of the three and two terminal on the back but not three and three so this is the original one that came with it it still had the wires attached to the back of it uh with the original uh, uh pots volume into two tones um so i took the treble bleed off of one of the off the volume control and i put it on this volume control so that's back on there and it even said in the schematics that that's what got, it's got on there uh, this has got 22s, point twenty twos as far as the tones, so that's what I put on, but the tones are wired differently from each other, they're not wired the same way. Um, another thing I wanted, I couldn't find out was, what does the toggle switch actually do? Alright, is it a phase? Is it um, coil splitting? What is it doing? So during my test you know I kind of like did the the whole you know coil tapping and everything else and I still heard you know the humbucker uh, as being like as a humbucker it didn't split the coil but I've read it throws it off phase but it only goes out of phase when you have the five-way switch in the middle and bridge position then you could flip it and now the humbucker is out of phase down and it's just a regular humbucker back to humbucker on the five way it's a humbucker now the humbucker's off it cuts it out kind of like a kill switch so that i was trying to find some information about online i did find a form and the guy said that you know he wired and it had the same wiring diagram as i got um and that's how he explained what that switch does. He just says he doesn't know if it's right or not because he can't find any information either. So I was like, okay, wonderful. So all in all, it's holding its own other than this screw here. I'm going to have to, uh, I don't know if I said it already, but I'm going to have to go ahead and drill these holes out, put a dowel rod inside there, and re-drill them because this one here is a little bit on an angle. And I don't know if you can see that, but it is not touching the body but I don't want it to start touching the body so these strings got to come off anyways the Floyd's got to come off anyways because I got a different issue here that I didn't even think about when I bought this Floyd Rose 2 was you know how well it's going to fit in this body now I got the action pretty low uh, and it's very comfortable to play it feels good I like it uh, it feels like my, my Ibanez that I got uh, that I don't even touch. But uh, look at that. If I put my cover plate back on, it's not touching. But that's why I have the trim stop inside. And this is a Floyd Rose trim stop, not the uh, brass one that you find on eBay. I end up going over by my music store and picking up a Floyd Rose one. And it is adjustable. You can, you know, disable it and everything else now I did make my custom you know my custom cover for this back plate and I do have the original covers so if anybody wanted to go back to the original covers 
not show off the electronics and shit. They, they have the choice to do so. So this is a 42 millimeter block. I ordered a 32 and a 37. And both of them should fit fine. But I'm thinking I'll go with the 37 because it's more of a mass. And I think from what I've read, something about, you know, the block is going to be, you know, better, I guess. Excuse me. But anyways, this is a, the only thing I can find on this thing for the way the body looks, the neck and everything else, the wiring configuration, everything about this guitar, it's either a 85 or an 87. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what this is. And I felt the need that restoring this thing back to its original was necessary. The body had a lot of scrapes, scratches, had some shit going on with it, some chips, sealed up all the chips, buffed the piss out, sanded and buffed the piss out of this thing to get it to back to stock finish, factory finish, almost close to it. Not at 100%, but I would say pretty much 99% of this thing is is back to, you know, there's a couple of little marks on it that didn't sand out because I was afraid to go too deep with the sandpaper and start removing clear. Um, and then there's some touch-up spots that are the one right here, and there's one right here, and you can kind of see them. Uh, I think when I get the Floyd Rose off, I'm going to end up removing the rubber pad that I put on here. There this originally doesn't come with the rubber pad. Now I've got two different types of uh, pads. One's a little bit thicker and this one's really thin and I just didn't get it close enough to the edge of there so I want to redo that. Make that look much better than what it is. So the test that I did was with high gain and I like metal so I'm kind of like you know I like high gain myself and you guys are asking about doing it in uh, you know clean now, when I used um, Amplitude 5, it starts off with a, uh, it looks like a Marshall head, and it's got a little bit of uh, dirt added to it, not much. It's mostly clean, and it sounded good with this. It actually really sounded good. Uh, but I was using, um, oh God, I can't remember what that, Spectre, um, what's his face? I can't remember his name either. Glenn Fricker. Uh, was promoting a program that is, you know, for people who like real heavy metal, comes with some pretty nice heads and shit, uh, or some amps, and I bought that, and that's what I was using when I made the video. So the neck is holding up great, the body is holding its own, the frets are did a beautiful job with the frets, they came out really, really nice, and I'm really, really happy with how they turned out fretboard I mean just everything that I've done with this thing so far is fallen into place where I want it exception of some minor little details that I have to take care of that I've already mentioned and then I already got my next projects coming in I bought um, an LT ESP LTD I think it's an M15 for like a hundred bucks off eBay it's black um, I am going to do kind of like what they do with a paisley but uh, this is going to be a Iron Maiden. I bought a um, uh, kind of like a child size Iron Maiden t-shirt. And I'm going to incorporate it on the top of the guitar. Uh, so it's going to be like how they do a Paisley, but with an Iron Maiden t-shirt. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to refinish that guitar. Uh, if the electronics are good, I'll use their that and I also picked up I think it's a Mitchell's Michael's Mitchell's something like that uh, Les Paul that, that another one I got for like a hundred bucks the is a brand new guitar and they're selling it as broken uh, it was a return and there's something wrong with the output jack talk about an easy freaking fix you know so I picked that thing up and it's it's like a green burst really really nice that one I want to check it out see what's going on with it I might just leave it all stock and uh, you know put it back up on eBay after fixing it or even keep it I don't know depending how much I like it you know with me with less Pauls and the uh, Epiphone Les Paul special uh, I put the epoxy resin on the top and I was kind of looking at it and it's like, you know what, 
I really don't like this striping. I don't like the way the striping looks. So I'm going to strip that and restripe it. And I'm going to strip it all the way down the bare wood and respray it red and start from scratch. So that's my plan with that. And I busted the fucking neck on that thing. The headstock on that thing, I started to, it's funny, I started to sand the neck down. You know how uh, Eddie Van Halen's guitar has the headstock where it's the same on both sides, just like the guitar. But the back of the neck, it V's, V's out in the back of the headstock, and the neck is like bare wood. Well, I started sanding that like that. And I found this dark spot on the side of the neck right next to the nut. And as I'm sanding it, it's glue. And in the middle of that is a piece of dowel rod. So I started scraping away at it, scraping away at it, and then adding pressure to it. And I split the headstock right off that thing. Somebody put, did something with that when it was either being built or, or later on, because it doesn't look like it was ever repainted, put a piece of dowel rod under the nut. Yeah. So I don't know if there was something going on at the factory or whatever. Uh, so that right now is sitting, well, I can show you pieces of it. Like, here's one piece of it. See, I didn't put that much pressure on it and I split that fucker off. It's got a nice truss rod on it though. So if I can find the headstock, let me see something. Yeah. Either it's a knot or something right there. And it goes all the way through. So I was like, fuck it. And see, I started to kind of sand it. Because I was going to do the striping on the headstock as well. So I picked up a new neck for that guitar as well. So yeah, just getting shit done around here. Tomorrow, or actually Monday, I got the guys coming in for the carpeting. And Tuesday, the furniture is coming. So... I won't be probably working on anything for those two days. So you guys take it easy. Have a good one. And I will get an update video tomorrow. My parts are, the rest of my parts are coming in. I'll get this thing fixed the way it's supposed to be. Don't like how that's leaning forward. And it's not by much either. But I didn't notice it until I put uh, the pressure of the bridge on it. That'll get fixed. And then we'll see where it goes from there. You guys take it easy. Have a good one.